Okay, thank you for coming. Today we're going to talk about core animation. And there's been some talks today about user experience. And what we're going to do is talk a little bit about animation, setting up a project, and various things. Um, how you set up layers, core graphics. How many people have done some core graphics for it? Good? Nobody. Okay, so I'll take you through the basics. Um, but I guess I want to start off with just a little bit of a story because as developers, we are telling a story. Right? And the reality is, is that we have on a device or on a desktop the user's attention for a finite amount of time and our role is to take them from the beginning part of the story to the end part of the story whilst they're using this device. And we have a responsibility not to confuse the user nor frustrate them. Okay? And what we try to do is engage them delight them, and in terms of expectations, our apps have to exceed their expectations, right? Almost. But then you'll notice if you look at some of the Apple Design Awards, the expectation or the bar is actually being raised. The bar is being raised because of attention to detail, user experience, and things like animation. Okay, and the thing that we need to remember when we're designing, it's not about us. It's about the user's goals, their goals. What are they trying to achieve? What are they trying to do? We just remember it's not about us, it's about them. And making a great experience for them. So how might we do this with animation technology? Well, if we use it carefully, we can communicate the story. The story that we're trying to tell. It might be a game, it might be filling out expenses. It's still part of this story that people engage with and they come to a closure and they finish up. So the beginning and end. So, into the code. Now, there are technologies that you'll find in iOS where you get animation for free. Navigation controllers, so when you see a table come up and somebody's browsing a hierarchy, it moves. You don't have to do any coding except say yes animation. So we're not going to talk about that sort of animation today. I want to go down a little bit lower um, and think about your own animations and how you can actually build some, some custom animations using the core animation technologies. And the old way of doing it was with timers. So you would set up a timer and periodically you would have to do something. And you would calculate where everything should be at every point in time. So if I wanted to move an object, then the object needed to be calculated every step of the way. And you made those calculations, you spent your programming, CPU cycles, actually calculating those positions. But in core animation, you have a different approach. You have an object that is going to be displayed on screen and you have an intention. That intention says, well, actually, I want to get that object up in that top corner. So instead of going through and setting up a timing loop and working through every individual frame, calculating where that should be, Apple's made it easier by saying, change the position to a particular coordinate. And what will happen once you execute that command is that the object animates. So Apple have done the heavy lifting for us. So Animation is not that difficult. Now, you can also talk to that object and say, well, change your opacity. And it will change in an animated way. Or we can ask it to rotate. And it will rotate in an animated way. So you get this smooth, gorgeous animation. And so what we need to play with is the views and the layers. And views on Mac OS 10 desktop, 10.6. Don't support animation out of the box. You have to turn it on. And there's this concept of turning on the layers by saying it, the view wants um, layers. Um, and then once you've got that available, you can manipulate the layer. You can um, add other layers to the view hierarchy. 
Um, and then you can adjust properties and change properties. And as you change them, they animate. So it's fairly simple. So one of the things we're going to play with is the wait from nib, which is something that happens when you actually are creating a view. So the, if you go and execute code and talk about this idea of a CA layer, you will get an error because out of the box we don't have the Quartz Core framework added to the project. So you must remember to do that. You must also remember to hash import the Quartz Core header. And this class called CA Layer is made available to you. And you choose from the list the Quartz Core framework, and you should be done. Now, when you wait from near, with that call to say that a view wants to be uh, to take part in the layer hierarchy, you just ask self to set once layer yes for the view. And we'll do all of this in a second. And we ask the layer class to give us a generic new layer, which is not a released object. And with that layer, we can, something's missing from there, add that to the view. Okay? And what I want to do is a demo. I'm going to start a new project. It'll just be a straight Coco application. And Okay, so out of the box, when we build and run, we just get a blank window. So there's nothing in there. So I'm conscious that there are a few people who, who came to yesterday's session. So I'm going to start just a little bit from the beginning. So if I want to create a view, then I add a new file. Objective-C class, specify that the subclass I want is not the default, which is NS object, but NS view. Click next and give that class a name. It'll be nice and generic, my view. So my view is now part of the classes belonging to this project. We get some default view code, which is for setting up the frame and drawing. And you'll notice that when I start playing with views, I won't even touch this draw rect. I only want it as a top level view. Now, to put the view in, I go to my main menu nib. I find a custom view. Bring up my library. Type in custom. There's several custom objects, and the one that looks like a rectangle with custom view in is the one I want. So I resize that. Hit Apple 3, Command 3 to resize. So that means the view will always take up full size. Now, that view is not going to do anything at this point. What I'm going to do is define an awake from nib. Now, the awake from nib for those who are new to the platform, is when the nib file, which is this main menu.nib, has been loaded and made available, but you have a last opportunity here to do some setup or changes. So what I'm going to do is, before the, the view is actually displayed, I'm actually going to, to do the self set wants layer. So it wants to participate in the layer hierarchy. Now, what I'm going to do is create a layer. Now, I'm going to do all of this inside this, this um, method. And as we work through this example, I'll clean it up a little bit more. CA layer, new layer, equals CA layer, layer. It creates the object. I need to insert it into the layer hierarchy. Now, self, this is the view. I can actually ask a view for its layer. Self layer. And there's a hierarchy 
of layer objects. So I can actually add this new layer to the layer that corresponds to my view. So self layer add sub layer new layer. Okay. So what we're doing is we're taking the view. The first part is actually turning on support for layering for the, of the top level view. And we create the new layer. This is an auto-released object that is returned. It's a, just a blank layer. And we're adding it to this layer hierarchy. Now, if I compile this, you'll see that things don't go well. Okay, so there's that error message that we had before. Objective C class CA layer reference from is not found. And the reason being is that we haven't set up the project to support Quartz Core. So the way that you do that is one, set up frameworks, go to other, you can put it in either one, but I tend to put it in other. Go to existing frameworks, so you're adding an existing framework. I hit control menu to bring up this, or control click on the on here. And a pop down will appear, you'll know that you're in 10.6, and you search for Quartz Core, probably hit Q and it would do the same thing. And I add that. Okay, if I just add that alone and I go build, it says build succeeded. Interesting. Now, if I started using any of the layer objects, that's when we'll start getting a complaint. So what I'm going to do, save time, in the top of my .h file, I'll actually add a reference to the quartz core framework. So I've added a layer to my view. If I run this, nothing happens. So you don't know whether a layer is actually there. It's not clear. And so there's a couple of little tricks that you have to be aware of. One of them is that when a layer is created, its rectangle or its, its frame is actually a zero frame. Okay? So it doesn't really exist. So you actually have to adjust the layers frame and a frame is in fact a rectangle but one of the things we have to be aware of when we are working with core animation is that we are not in Cocoa land so NS rect, NS point are not the native um, data types for points and rectangles so we actually have to use a CG um, form of rectangle so CG rect make Okay, and we can pick um, a number here. Let's just make it 10, 10, 100, 100. And another little debugging tip, just so we can see it, is to set the border width equal to 2. So let's run now. Nothing, and the reason being, um, <coughs> set up layers in view. No, okay, so the reason that didn't work is this still says custom view. So what I haven't done is actually set up my class. So when you get a custom view, it's an NS view object. And it's not until you define it here in the class identity does it actually know that it's, actually, it's a my view class. So now that says my view, and now when this is instantiated, this particular class should be created. Okay, and there is this rectangle. This rectangle is 10 pixels by 10 pixels, away from the edge, 100 by 100. So what I've actually done there is created a layer it's sitting inside the view. I've specified the frame, and the frame is in a coordinate system relative to the parent. In this case, the parent is content view because it sits here within the window, not including the title bar. So that is a very simple um, layer. So as I've just shown, if you actually run this at the beginning, you won't see anything. 
Okay, because there's no content in there. So we need to define the frame, and I use that property border width. I'm just going to use that for debugging so I can see where my, my frame is. So we've set up the view and the layer. So I started using a couple of CG functions. CG is Core Graphics. Core Graphics is a C-based API that's the underlying graphics architecture. Um, we won't delve into a lot of the pure C-based function calls, but um, be aware that it's not as um, easy to use as um, Objective-C and Espezia paths, but um, you get all the power of the graphics engine underneath. You also have to manage memory very carefully. So the idea of retain release is there, but it's very easy to um, make some mistakes because there's no concept of auto-release down at that level. And you saw that I, I used a, a CG rect and I used a convenience function, CG rect make, which takes four parameters, an X, a Y, which is the origin, and a width and a height for the extent of the rectangle. So what I did is specified um, the frame and the actual width. And we'll see that we can take get rid of the width in a moment. OK, so what I've done is just really create the layer inside um, the awake from nib. And really, there's a point of reference to a layer. And I've added that as a sub-layer to the, to the views layer. But if I want to change that later in my program, I've really lost the reference to um, this layer. Notice here, I create the object. I add it. Now, this is auto-released, so we won't get a memory leak when it finishes executing the awake from nib method. So whilst this shows us how things work, it is much better to keep a reference to this layer around. So, and that's why I actually put the quartz core in the top header file, is that I make a reference to the new layer as an attribute of the view. And what I'm also going to do is use properties and retain it. I'll be good in using non-atomic if I was going to put this through multi-processing and threading. And I recreate the declaration and I also add my synthesize. Okay, so really what I've done is set up an accessor that's just going to remember new layer. And now by doing this, I have my set new layer and new layer um, accessors available to me, or I can use the dot notation. So instead of using this, I actually say self dot new layer equals this. Um, and I need to make sure that all the other references to new layer now are preceded with self. Okay, so build run, that should still work. I've obviously missed something here. C A U, let's say lowercase, I've typed. Okay, everything's still working. Great. Okay, so how do we make this, this animate? Well, the nice thing is that Apple's made it very easy, is that we just have to change some properties. And the properties that we can change are things like position. So I need a way to interact with my app. So what I'm going to do, and this is something I didn't do yesterday, was create a menu, and that menu will call into my view code. And so I'm going to create an action, and we'll call it um, move object, or we'll call it move layer, sounds a bit Okay, so I'm going to make an action method that will move the layer. Hash pragma mark action methods move layer. So move layer needs to act on this particular object. So I'm going to say self dot new layer dot position equals. I'm going to create just an arbitrary point. Um, my box is sitting somewhere 
Um, it's 100 wide, and its bottom left corner is a 1010. So if I made this sit somewhere else, say 300, tab 300, this should just adjust the layer's position. Now I need to call this. What I'm going to do is create a menu. Now, if you write an application that doesn't do anything with any other menus, you should delete them. So it's going to delete those. I don't need a file menu. So I come back to my library, find some sort of menu object, which is a top level menu object. I can just drag that in. I can call that, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to do something with the layer. And if I click on it, I get an item. And so I'm going to call that move. Now the way that I connect this is draw a connection between move and my view. And that happens to be move layer. So I make a connection between that item and the action method that we exposed for the view. Make sure that I save. And we'll see if this code gets called. Run. I'm just going to open this up full screen. Layer. That's active, so the method's working. Okay. So just by changing the position, we get animation. Okay, so it's that simple. We can change other properties as well. Okay, so I can make another action method. Um, we can change the opacity. Okay, and really, self dot new layer dot opacity equals pick fifty percent opacity. Save. Set up an action method. There, go back, and make a menu. So open this up, grab an item, drag it in, call it um, opacity, connect it, control drag, change opacity, save, run. So if I move it, change opacity. It's opaque. So just changing the properties enables us to do all of this animation. Now, when we change the property, there's a default animation um, time. And you know, with position, all we did was assign, reassign a CG point. And opacity is a value between 1 and 0. So we can change any of those properties. So that move, reset is a simple one, which is where we just move the position back and change the opacity back to, to normal. So, and so you really just... Now, the interesting bit is when I change position. I'm going to show you um, something. So I take the two bits that change position. Now, you sort of look at this position and go, hmm, OK. Um, we made the origin 1010. So let's make the origin 1010. And reset the opacity to 1. Um, always. Use floating point values here because if you actually put integers in there, there's a performance hit of actually converting a float to an integer, which when you're writing fast graphics code, you don't need that. So um, I need to create the menu. And make the connection. Now, if I wanted to, I can double click over here and I can go Option R, and that starts putting hotkeys in the space for me. So I don't, I can try different things Option O, Option M, click 
click and drag. Uh, reset. So, run. So, layer, move, change opacity, reset. Okay, notice it's not in the beginning position. That's because the position that we are changing has to do with a property called the anchor point. And that point is assumed to be right in the centre, correct. So the thing is we need to make an adjustment for that. And if we do our calculation, we realise that, well, halfway is 50 plus the offset. So it's going to be 60, 60, which will get us back to that, to that point. and that will bring us back home. Move, capacity, option R, reset. We're our way back home again. So you need to be aware of that. You can programmatically change that point, the anchor point, so you can decide that it really needs to be here or it needs to be there. Now, another quick um, sort of example you know, for mouse handling to make this interactive. This is a view, so I can override mouse down because we're in a, an NS responder class and I can get the position local point of the mouse down so I'm going to ask my view to convert a point and the point is going to be the point that the event gives me relative to the window from view passing nil and it will co convert that to a local coordinate. Now, I can't just go self.newlayer.position equals local point. I compile that. Oh. Interesting. I thought that would give me a compile error. Um, let's see if this does what I expect it to do. Click. It does. OK, what's happening there? is that that is an NS point and this position is a CG point. Once upon a time I used to see things complain. Um, there are mechanisms to convert. I'll just NS point from CG point and NS point to CG point are ways you can convert between CG points and local points. But it seems like you don't need that anymore. Well, they always were effectively the same data structure, weren't they? They were, so why did they give us an NSCG point? Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. So, one more thing is how we might rotate, translate and scale. So, there is a structure called CA Transform 3D and what we can do is create a transform by specifying an angle and the axis by which we'll be rotating by. So, this is your X, Y... Z coordinates. So we're going to be rotating um, around the Z axis. And all we do is tell the layer, transform, assign the value of this um, transform matrix. So save a little bit of typing. Come through here. Set up another action method. Rotate. Now all of these look kind of boring because I'm just using a wireframe. I haven't put any content inside. So um, hopefully that won't matter because <coughs> you know, you're getting the concept of how this, this works. See a transform rotate equals this radiant. So I need to define this. CG float um, radians equals, say, 15 degrees divided by 180 multiplied by pi. pi. Um, you don't need to specify math. You get that as part of this project. And self.newlayer.transform equals rotation. Again, make another menu item. Now, if I wanted to, I could go through and figure out you know, um, 
other ways to capture rotation, rotate. Um, if I was porting this code across to iPhone, I would look at the pinch gesture. Add another one. I've got rotate before reset. Now what am I going to do about a um, keystroke? I won't bother. Control, drag, rotate, save. Now, let's just rotate and see what happens. It just rotates with the animation there. And we can go and get the identity matrix when we reset, etc. Um, no, it's, it's actually relative to that axis. So if we apply it again, you actually have to um, multiply the transform. So if I run that again, rotate. Doesn't rotate again because it's already transformed. Could you use the rotation yeah. So what you can do is ask for the transformation matrix and then apply another transform on top of that. Okay. So that's transformations. So we've just done rotate. A very similar um, example is just text layers. And what I can do is. <coughs> Run this one. And just playing with my code. Okay, so what I've done is just there's nothing there initially. And then I click, and we've got opacity as well as a slower level of animation. So what have I done there? Well, here I've actually used CA text layer. I've set up the frame. I was using border width as a debug statement earlier. And I added that text layer to the views layer hierarchy. And then all I did is change some properties of the text layer, the string, specify the font size. This is um, where you need to know a little bit more about core graphics. So I've used a, a CG color create generic RGB. There is a memory issue with this because I'm pretty sure this is actually creating an object. Um, that's unlike Objective-C, there is no auto release here. So foreground color in this case is black. If I wanted to confirm that this is in fact working. There it is, that's red. And it's where I'm clicking is where it's moving the position to. Um, and at the beginning, the opacity is zero, so I'm actually putting a layer in there. But when I do mouse down, I'm getting the point. I'm actually using this routine here to change the duration of all the animations, where you can set duration. Um, here I'm doing that local point conversion, which I now know I don't need, and then I just up the opacity to one. Okay, so I'm responding to the events and updating. And the nice thing is, is you don't have to explicitly do anything. Just change the parameters and it will go and do it for you. And that's why this animation technology is actually kind of easy to use. Okay, so a custom layer. At the moment what we've been doing is putting these layers that have nothing in them um, and there's sort of two paths. I can actually show you how to put graphics inside. Um, which is an image, or I can show you how to draw. And what I want to do is show you the, the draw mechanism. So, I do have another example, which is, which one is it? Custom layer. Right, blind. Okay, so let's just see what happens with custom layer. I'm not doing anything too too flash here. Is that I'm drawing. I can move this object around and it's still drawing. Um, actually, it's not drawing. It's moving um, 
the layer cache around and then you don't actually see a redraw. And I'll show you what happens with this one. So what I do in this case is subclass CA layer for my own purposes. Now I don't have any parameters in here, but if you had lots of things to say how the drawing might appear, where the radiuses are, where the centre is, you'd store all of that inside this particular layer. The magic is in this class, um, in this instance method. So every layer actually has a draw in context that you can override. Now draw in context is very similar to the views um, draw rect, which we've been introduced to, but Drawing context has all of this CG stuff in it. So you passed in a context and you know, it's, it's like playing with PostScript. You've got a context and then you actually have to issue um, drawing commands. So those drawing commands here just move to point, add a line to a point, change a colour, stroke the path. So those two things there that defined moving to the origin, adding a line to um, 100, 100, that gets drawn by this particular stroke command. Now I'm doing something a little bit different because whilst I said you need to know about CG graphics and there's lots and lots of routines there, there is a way to actually get the Coco drawing context and issue Coco drawing commands from within this drawing context. It's a little tricky but um, and it's definitely not obvious so you actually get a, an NS graphics context and you get the graphics content from the current graphics port and that graphics port is in fact it's um, the context that's been passed in. This is flipped, is set to no because in, tennis, uh, in desktop you can actually have coordinate system um, which defaults bottom left corner is origin or it can be flipped so that means that the top left corner is the origin, which makes it more consistent with iOS. Then you save the actual NS graphics state, this is a class method, and then this, the graphics context that you were given from this command is the new context, and then from here to here you can issue um, NS Bezier style commands, and then when you're done, restore the graphics state. Okay, so if you know and love NS Bezier path, then you still can use that, um, or you can go the CG route. Either way will work. And the only other trick to this code is the following. Okay, so we do the same thing. We set once layer, yes. We ask the layer, we, or we create my own version of the layer and we're utilising the fact that um, we inherit this class method called layer from CA layer. Set the frame, set the border width, add the layer and if I forget this line which we've never used until this point, my drawing's not there. Okay, No matter how much I move this around or resize my screen, nothing changes. But this line of code here is really important. And you need to say, well there is a change. I want this to display. And this triggers the drawing context. Okay, so I remember scratching my head for a long time going, why isn't my stuff appearing? Well one, I didn't have border width um, set so I didn't know where my frame was. Um, forgetting to actually define a frame size um, is another thing, you're looking for something that has zero size and if you don't tell it to display it won't draw. So you have drawing working now and it's animating and I could rotate it, I could do everything else and everything that's inside there obeys um, those property changes. Okay. So it's a custom layer. Okay, I want to go to the other graphics example. Um, now, 
There's a couple of ways to do this, and I guess I grabbed a piece of code that I knew was working, and that's assigning um, something a little bit more interesting than a than a wireframe look and feel to your to your views or layers, so rather. So I guess I'll just show you this code, and probably this is the best example to do. Okay, and this is where. Um, this is a CG way of doing things. And there is a property of a layer called contents. And when you look up in the help, contents is in fact, it asks for an ID, but really what you're assigning is a CG image ref. What is that? Core graphic image ref. Um, so all this code here does the following. NS str string file name. In this bundle, main bundle, path for resource, path PNG. So really what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, I'm going to give you the, um, the main part of my file name. I'm going to assume that the extension is .png. And this concept of a main bundle relates to pulling things out of your application. Now, how did that happen? Well, I have a file in my resources called red with a space PNG and anything you put in resources if you look at the target and you look at the copy bundle resources you'll realize that okay there's an info plist.strings there's the zip and red dot PNG what that means is that when they're creating the application remember an application on Mac OS is a folder they're going to copy those three files in so if I go back and look at my build, open up my build, look inside debug, there's my app. Control, click, show package contents. Contents, open up contents. Info plist, Mac OS, I can open that, and there's a thing that looks like an executable, open up resources, and there is a set of strings, a, notice, a nib file, um, and the red dot, dot PNG. So there are all these resources that are hidden behind the application icon. Um, and that's how you get these resources included in your application. So what I've done is I've added a graphic. I'm just asking the bundle for the file name. So give me the path for the resource called red dot. It's going to have a type PNG. And then I have to hand it off to CG so you have to convert the URL to a file name and that gives you a, a reference to the image source and if that's valid come through and get create an image from the image source at index 0 so if there's only one image inside your, your file you'll get the first one um, then once you've got the image ref you assign it to contents I know the size of my, my file so I'm sort of um, I'm just specifying as being 100, 100, then I clean up. So there's these CF releases that you have to pay attention to when you're down in CG land. Um, again, no auto release type function. Um, so all I'm doing is making sure that I can open up a file and put it into a layer's contents. And I just did that to speed up the following. So the code that I'm about to show you, well, let me show you what it does so you can see why this works. Okay, so I actually have just a grid of nine dots. So if I animate that to the center of the screen, okay, so it all animates smoothly. And then I can take it back to the original. So I've got a different duration, I can keep doing this. back to the original. I can also go center it, but then quickly go original. Okay, so you can actually change the properties and animation will stop and um, keep, will adopt the new um, animation path. So what I'm doing in code is I'm setting up um, a matrix, a three by three matrix of these layers. So I specify a constant, which is going to be the maximum size I play around with my layer width and layer height and the, the, where I'm going to start from, so this is my bottom 
um, corner, 2020, and I'm going to have a 20 pixel spacing between the layers. I specify that the view is going to want to play in the layer hierarchy, and then I set up two arrays. One array is going to contain all the layers, and I'm using a slightly different construct that I was using yesterday, but I can actually say when I'm creating an array how many items I'm expecting. This is good for performance reasons because if it knows how many entries are there, it'll go and pre-allocate some things for us behind the scenes. And then I'm also going to store an array of positions. So they're going to be the points, but you have to remember that arrays don't store um, structures. CG point, NS point are structures. So I need to do a little bit of magic to convert those things. And then I have the two loops to do the three grids. And each time through, I create a layer. Again, there's a bit of debug code to say where my border is. And I'm even specifying a corner radius. Let me turn this on so next time we look, you'll see what that is. And then I calculate a rectangle, where that should be. So just taking the coordinates and the current i and j. And I also calculate the position or the center point of um, that entry. So in terms of original positions, I add an object. What I'm using is a value wrapper. And again, I don't need this piece of code that does this anymore, but we take an NS value, pass it to a class method, value with point. So here is a structure as an argument, and it's going to return an NS object subclass, which is an NS value that's going to get stored in my array. And based on you know, the frame, or the rectangle that we calculated up here, I adjust the frame, and then I use this bit of helper code that I made before to actually set the graphic um, in my layer. So the layer dot contents will be assigned this graphic. This is inefficient code because I'm not caching the graphic. It has to load each time it goes through. Um, and then I also add to my layers array the new layer. And that just loops. And after I do that, I've created here you know, just an array of layers. I haven't actually added them to the, um, the view. So here, the views layer, I add sub layer and add each one. That's really all that code does. So it just sets up all the layers for me. And the two routines for animation are kind of simple. The one that animates out, which is actually moving everything to the center, I go and ask the view, give me your bounds. And then I'm going to calculate the midpoint, X and Y, and that gives me my center point. I slow down the animation for demonstration purposes. And then I go through each layer and update its position. And when all those done, they animate together. Animating back to the original was really going back and pulling out the values that I've stored in the array, which are NS values. I print them out because I wasn't 100% sure they were all going through. The reason being, um, I, when I was writing this code, I made a mistake where I forgot to um, create the array. And something I mentioned yesterday for um, those who are new to Coco is that if I forget to create the array, this is nil. This becomes a nil targeted action. So nil here results in nothing happening. So this becomes nil. So that's why I had a, a bug before. And again, just updating the position. And that's it. So, very simple, and there's a little bit more that you can do. Something called basic animation. So what we've done at the moment is just adjust a property, and it goes from here and all behind the scenes. It ends up um, with its opacity changing from um, one to half, or its position moving smoothly between one position and another position. But what you can actually do is use what they call a basic animation class, and you can specify a range. So instead of just one thing happening, you can set up these parameters. So that means that you can modify a parameter in a time varying way. So what you're going to see is an example where I change something called well, it's a transformation. There's going to be a rotation, and it's a rotation about Z, and we're going to use a key path to define this animation. Now, where do I find all of these things? Um, there is a list of different key paths. I can change the rotation, I can change the scale, I can change the translation using this technique. 
Now, what's nice about this is that I can specify ranges. I'm only just using one at the moment. And there's a there's from value, by value, to value. I'm just using by value. So by value is in fact not just a floating point. It's actually, again, one of these objects. Instead of using NS value, it's NS number. And I'm just calculating um, a floating point number um, that's based on 10 degrees, converting it to radians. And it's got a current value and this by value. And what's going to happen if I specify auto reverses is that it's going to move the value backwards and forwards between um, this value and I think it's zero. And I can specify how long it will take to do that. And I can also use the recommended number for forever um, to keep doing this. And then what I do is I ask my layout to add this basic animation for this particular key part. So transform rotation Z. So the way this moves as a number, a varying number, will control this parameter. So Okay, and a basic animation. So I've just really put that code in here. So there's no I'll change. Let's run this. And here I've actually put my big dot, and I can move it. And it's gone off screen. But then I can run the basic animation. Okay, so for those of you who get seasick, close your eyes. But I've just got this gentle rocking going on. It's there and it's going to keep going. So you can do these um, keyframe animations. Um, it's not just a single property. And then it's not just a one shot. It can actually loop. And you know, once you start putting the graphics in, you know, these things start looking quite amazing. But start with your wireframes and look how does everything move and then go through and add the better graphics. There is so much more to this than what I've presented, but really I wanted to pitch this at a basic level for those who are new to, to COCO. Um, the Introduction to Corimation Programming Guide has lots more to talk about, so check it out. So really what we do is we take a view and we tell it, or well, it asks, it wants to participate in the, in the um, layer hierarchy. So we set wants layers to yes. We construct a whole pile of layers and we add those as sub-layers to the top level layer. And then we adjust the properties. Things happen. And you saw that you, still, you need to understand CG a little more if you want to customise. At the very least, you can just play around with points and, and rectangles. And the reality is, is that these things can enhance the user experience. That just a subtle animation can communicate what the user should do or how the information's changed. And why do we do this? Well, one, we do it subtly, but we do it because it helps tell the story. It helps the user understand, oh, now I understand what's just happened on the interface.